Good evening and welcome to this evening's stories from the shed. Danny the Champion of the World, Chapter 14. Let's say hello to Rebel. Let's say hello to Pesco. And let's say hello to Mr Shoutout. We'd like to give a shout out. She's asked twice um, and uh, I forgot the other day so I must apologise. Amna. Amna from Year 3. Big shout out for Amna because I know that she's following the story every night. Okay? What's happened to Captain Lancaster? Let's have a look. Oh my word, he's been spun into his own web. The spider has stuck into his web <gasps> and she's still there and the egg sack is still waiting to hatch of all those baby spiders. Oh, it doesn't look good for you, Captain. Let's get back to the story. Danny and his dad about to go into the wood. Chapter 14, Into the Wood. My father came out of the caravan wearing the old navy blue sweater and the brown cloth cap with the peak pulled low down over his eyes. What's under there, Dad? I asked, seeing the bulge at his waistline. He pulled up his sweater and showed me two thin but very large white cotton sacks. They were bound neat and tidy around his belly. To carry the stuff, he said darkly. Aha! Go and put on your sweater, he said. It's brown, isn't it? Yes, I said. That'll do, but take off those white sneakers and wear your black shoes instead. I went into the caravan and changed my shoes and put on my sweater. When I came out again, my father was standing by the pump, squinting anxiously up at the sun, which was now only the width of a man's hand above the line of trees along the crest of the ridge on the far side of the valley. I'm ready, Dad. Good boy. Off we go. Have you got the raisins? I asked. In there, in here, he said, tap tapping his trouser pocket, where yet another bulge was showing. I put them all in one bag. It was a calm sunny evening with little wisps of brilliant white cloud hanging motionless in the sky and the valley was cool and very quiet as the two of us began walking together along the road that ran between the hills towards Wendover. The iron thing underneath my father's foot made a noise like a hammer striking a nail each time it hit the road. This is it Danny, we're on our way now, he said. By golly, I wish my old dad were coming with us on this one. He'd have given his right teeth to be here at this moment. Mum too, I said. Oh yes, he said, giving a little sigh. Your mother would have loved this one. Then he said, Your mother was a great one for walking, Danny, and she would always bring something home with her to brighten up the caravan. In summer it was wild flowers or grasses. When the grass was in seed, she could make it look absolutely beautiful in a jug of water, especially with some stalks of wheat or barley in between. In the autumn, she would pick branches of leaves, and in winter it was berries or old man's beard. We kept going, and then he said, How do you feel, Danny? How do you feel? Terrific, I said, and I meant it. For although the snakes were still wiggling in my stomach, I wouldn't have swapped places with the King of Arabia at that moment. Do, do you think they might have dug any more of those pits for us to fall into? I asked. Don't you go worrying about pits, Danny, my father said. I'll be on the lookout for them this time. We shall go very carefully and very slowly once we're in the wood. How dark will it be in there when we arrive? Not too dark, he said. Quite light, in fact. Then how do we stop the keepers from seeing us? Aha, he said. That's the fun of the whole thing. That's what it's all about. It's hide and seek. It's the greatest game of hide and seek in the world. Well, you mean because they've got guns? Well, he said, that does add a bit of flavour to it, yes. We didn't talk much after that. But as we got closer and closer to the wood... I could see my father becoming more and more twitchy as the excitement begin to, began to build up in him. He would get hold of some awful old tune and instead of using the words he would go tum 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 over and over again. 
Then he would get hold of another tune and go pom 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 pom. As he sang, he tried to keep time with the tap tap of his iron foot on the roadway. When he got tired of that, he said to me, I'll tell you something interesting about pheasants, Danny. The law says that they're wild birds, so they only belong to you when they're on your own land. Did you know that? I didn't know that, Dad. So if one of Mr Hazel's pheasants flew over and perched on our filling station, he said, it would belong to us. No one else would be allowed to touch it. You mean even if Mr Hazel had bought himself as a chick, I said, even if he had bought it and reared it in his own wood? Absolutely, my father said. Once it flies off his own land, he's lost it. Unless, of course, it flies back again. It's the same with fish. Once a trout or a salmon has swum out of your stretch of the river into somebody else's, you can't very well say, hey, that's mine, I want it back. Can you? Of course not, I said, but I didn't know it was like that with pheasants. It's the same with all game, my father said. Hares, deer, partridge, grouse, you name it. We had been walking steadily for, a, for about an hour and a quarter, and we were coming to the gap in the hedge where the cart track led up the hill to the big rud where the pheasants lived. We crossed over the road and went through the gap. We walked up on the cart track and we reached the crest of the hill and we could see the wood ahead of us. Huge and dark with the sun going down behind the trees and little sparks of gold shining through. No talking, Danny. Once we're inside, my father said, keep very close to me and try not to go snapping any branches. Five minutes later, we were there. The wood skirted the edge of the track on the right-hand side with only the hedge between it and us. Come on, my father said. In we go. He slipped through the hedge on all fours and I followed. It was cool and murky inside the wood. No sunlight came in at all. My father took me by the hand and together we started walking to forward between the trees. I was very grateful to him for holding my hand. I had wanted to take hold of this one moment we entered the wood, but I thought he might disapprove. And here we are, in Hazel's wood. The birds are all around, but where are the keepers? And will they find us?